Great job, you guys. All right, let's review. We've seen how ancient cultures used the Sun-Earth connection to mark the season. And you've seen an activity which uses the placement of shadows to record the movement of the sun across the sky. Research regarding Native American astronomy has recently begun to gain headway in archaeoastronomy. Let's look at the ways Native cultures in the Americas use the Sun-Earth connection. Nancy Maryboy and David Begay are two indigenous astronomers from the Navajo Nation. Yak A, hello. We're here in Hovenweep National Park in southern Utah. I'm a Cherokee Navajo. I live not far from here, and I'm an educator on the Navajo Nation. A cultural astronomer means you deal with the astronomy of your own culture, and we put things within the context of a native worldview. Right behind me on the boulder, you can see an indication of a solar phenomena. On the boulder, there's two images. One's a concentric circle, one's a spiral. As the sun begins to rise, shafts of light come in from each direction. And as the sun continues to rise, the lights meet in the center. This only happens once a year. This phenomenon occurs on the longest day of the year and is a very appropriate way to mark time. This can be a very harsh environment to live in. It can be hot, it can be cold, and it can be very dry. In order to survive, people had to live in accordance with the natural environment, and that meant the natural cosmic environment, the sun, the moon, and the stars. It was very important to track the path of the sun and the moon and certain constellations. And to do that, people used natural markers like petroglyphs and sun and moon alignments. Remember, there was no watches, there was no timekeepers, there was no calendars. My name is David Begay. I am a cultural astronomer. I've been living out here for many years. Uh, my clan is Maidish Gijni. This clan is a descendant from the Hamas Pueblo people. And here is one of the structure at Hovenweet National Monument. This structure had many purposes, one of which was an observatory. The ancient had a profound respect for the movement of the sun and the stars. On the longest day of the year, the sun shines through an opening and the light falls on a marker. What people experience here is really a cultural experience. It's a whole life experience. People felt the movement of the sun. People felt the movement of the moon. It was a daily experience. Among the Navajo people, for the sun, when it reaches summer solstice, it's a total life experience. People used to talk about the solstice being a four-day phenomenon. People used to say, uh, the sun spent four days before it starts moving back the other way. So it's really something that was experienced, it was talked about, it was a part of the culture, has been passed on through the generation. I think people uh, talk about these movements in terms of days. I'm not sure if you can really call it special math. I don't think tracking the sun down to the second was important at that time. These buildings and boulders are remnants of ancient civilizations, much like the ruins in Rome, the ruins in Greece. And today, they're still very relevant to us out here in the Southwest. We still see the same sky, and we're in awe of the technology that was employed to build these buildings and capture these solar and lunar alignments. Today, we look in the sky, we use some of the same knowledge that the ancestral Pueblans used. We use it for planting, we use it for setting ceremonies, and we use it to keep the earth in order. The uh, balance between earth and sky is still very important to native peoples. Thanks, Nancy, and thanks, David. You know, guys, one of the earliest Native American structures to observe the sun and the stars is Casa Rinconada, located in the Chaco Cultural National Historical Park. Casa Rinconada is a large kiva. Kivas are large, circular rooms used for ceremonies by Native American cultures. Like Hovenweep, on the day of the summer solstice, a beam of light from an opening in the kiva precisely illuminates a niche in the far wall. 
For years, Chaco Canyon was primarily seen as a trade center, but with the advent of archaeoastronomy, Chaco is beginning to be seen as a center of astronomy and cosmology. So far on today's program, we have seen how the relationship between the sun and the earth weaved a connection between all ancient cultures. Now, much of the information from those cultures has been lost to us. However, other cultures have recorded that information. And now, that information is being interpreted. For a look at one of these ancient cultures, let's return to Dr. Stanley.